This is an Akai 20 inch LCD TV with a built in uh, DVD player. It has no power whatsoever. And haven't even uh, looked at the back of it yet to see how old it is or anything like that. So let me get this uh, stand taken off and get the back panel off and see, see what's going on. Well, I've already removed the shield from the main board now that I've got the back panel off. Power supply is simple, just two 12 volt outputs. And the problem's already evident. More uh, exploded capacitors here. And I don't know whether they permanently damaged the power supply or not. Uh, it wasn't putting out anything, but it's probably going into overload because of the caps. Uh, might try running this without a load and see if it starts up. Some some switching power supplies will and some won't, so um, I'm not sure if I'm going to have these caps in stock or not, but I'm going to start with uh, making sure the power supply is okay, and then I'm going to take this board off here. Well, this is kind of odd. The two caps that are bulging on top uh, appear to be the capacitors that couple the signal to the speakers, so that's really strange. Uh, the rest of them look okay physically unfortunately I didn't bring my ESR meter home so I can't start testing these caps and the power supply seems to be dead as well uh, I guess I'm just gonna have to pull the boards off and, and uh, wait until I get my ESR meter and I'll probably take them to work with me and test them there and uh, get the parts ordered that I need if I find a bunch of bad caps other than, other than the uh, speaker caps and, see if I can't make this thing work again but I'm gonna have to put it on the back burner for now cuz I got a million other projects I gotta tie up well I took the power supply out and I'd say the power supply is history two nice uh, craters blown in the board by uh, exploded MOSFETs probably just gonna have to look for a replacement I don't know if it's gonna be worth trying to fix that or not so, got more than one problem with this TV. Cheap modern junk. Well, this ain't the prettiest rig job in the world, but I think it's going to work. I ended up using two really high quality 12 volt power supplies to replace the uh, dual output 12 volt supply that was in there before. Because it was just so burned up that uh, it just it was just too far gone. There's holes burned in the board. and several bad components and it's just not very reliable these power supplies here will last will outlast the TV by a long shot just had to uh, hardwire everything in these used to be some standalone 12 volt adapters with uh, uh, let's see this this plug here would be soldered on one end here and then the other end would be just a, a, a wire with a barrel connector on the end of it so I took them out of their enclosures and uh, just hardwired them into the TV. Still got this connector here if I need to disconnect them and then spade lugs here for the AC side. Uh, they're insulated on the back side with plastic of course. I wouldn't be sitting them directly in the middle. But uh, all I gotta do is get them mounted in, probably with a combination of double sided tape and a couple of screws if I can. And uh, I'll go ahead and put the cover back on. Got those four bad capacitors here replaced and uh, just want to throw the back on and see if it's actually going to work. I know it powers up and puts a picture on the screen. Uh, I haven't tested the D uh, DVD player yet, but it should be okay. I just want to get this thing out of here, so let's see what I can come up with for the power supply mounts. DVD player works. Once I get those power supplies secured, I can put the back on. This thing is done. Finally. Been done in my workshop for way too long. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of a neat little combo, kind of comes in handy, but it's not the best picture in the world, of course. This is an older set. I'm not used to seeing a square screen anymore for TVs these days. Okay. One of my favorite movies. Alright, got the power supplies mounted in the best I could. 
using some extremely strong double-sided tape for most of it and then uh, got the original standoff still there supporting the weight of gravity on the supply then they're fastened to each other and then supported further by a pair of zip ties going up to the other standoffs probably overkill the tape alone should have been enough because that stuff's really strong but uh, I wanted to just have a precaution if the tape ever comes off they'll basically just be hanging on the zip ties and uh, sitting against these standoffs so they really won't even go anywhere at that point um, and as far as anything shorting out these these are grounded heat sinks plus there's a layer of plastic on those and then a layer of blank circuit board material between that and the actual bottom of the circuit board so there is no danger of anything shorting out on the chassis with these it's not the uh, prettiest thing ever but it'll do the job and I think it'll far outlast the original these are commercial grade power supplies with Japanese capacitors on them and they're rated for plenty more current than what the TV is going to use so let me go ahead and put the back cover on this thing and get it the heck out of here. Kind of ironic how widescreen broadcasts are more convenient on a 4x3 TV because there's still a lot of 4x3 content. Where if you have a widescreen TV, it'll either compress it even more than what it already is, make it double wide, or it will stretch out the 4x3. I thought it was supposed to be the other way around in that... Uh, Everything was supposed to go widescreen and just work out, but I'm still having better luck with, with a 4x3 TV, even nowadays. But, uh, this TV's on its way out the door. As soon as I get done watching a couple things, that is.